Uh, hello, Internet, and uh, welcome back to Apocrypha. Uh, we have almost our full crew here today. Uh, Lindsay's running a bit late, but should be here soon. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, a couple of things before we get going, uh, one of which I, I we'll just do this right off the bat. Uh, dice giveaway. We've been amping up for this for a long time now. Finally did our final drawing um, of who is going to win this this much sought after and disputed over uh, set of dice. Uh, and the winner, as the gods have proclaimed, is Flint Gibson uh, on Twitter at FlintGold1. Uh, you are our lucky winner of our dice here tonight. Um, we will be sending you a message uh, to to congratulate you and, uh, and get your details. So we can send those dice to you right away. Um, make sure you respond to us soon so we can uh, get those over to you. Uh, but that that we'll do that later. So uh, hopefully you're in the chat. If you are, thank you so much for entering. Um, if not, uh, we will talk to you soon. Uh, otherwise. As far as everything else we have going on, uh, later this week, we have our first uh, GM, GGK roundtable discussion. It's going to be on Thursday at 8 o'clock. Uh, looking forward to doing that. We should be putting up a poll here. I think the plan is either tonight or tomorrow morning uh, to have some topics for you to vote on for us to discuss. It's going to be myself, Ryan, and Lindsay talking about some, uh, some of our things we find interesting about DMing uh, or GMing and kind of the thoughts and random musings that go through our heads on a, on a regular basis. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, be a brief snippet into the hours that we spend talking about this stuff not on stream. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, we have our regular lineup going on. We have uh, Survivor's Complex on Saturdays, Wild Space next Monday. You can catch all of those details on in our uh, below in Twitch. You can see the uh, the lineup and the when we're going to be streaming next. And if you want any other details on that or any announcements, go to our Twitter page. We can catch all that. Uh, only other thing I neglected to announce uh, before that was we have a new game, a new D&D campaign that's going to be starting on the 22nd, uh, run by Lindsay, uh, called Tidefall. And that's going to be another D&D 5e campaign, uh, but with Lindsay's twist on it, which I'm sure will be uh, something unlike anyone has ever seen before. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm, ex I'm sad that she's not here for me to embarrass her by just going on and on about it, but we'll just go ahead and stop there. Um, otherwise, I think that's basically it as far as announcements go. Uh, look out for more giveaways in the future. Uh, we will be certainly running those soon, uh, as soon as we get the details worked out. So otherwise, I think we'll go ahead and we're good to go ahead and start our game. Now, I want to do this in the right order this time because we I normally do the recap and then we stop to do highlight stats. I want to go ahead and start with highlighted stats because I feel like that keeps things from getting interrupted, keeps the flow from being interrupted. So uh, let's go ahead and do those. Uh, obviously, Lindsay or uh, uh, Birdie is going to be joining us partway through. So uh, let's do everybody else's first and then we'll go ahead and be able to do Birdie's just on her own. Um, so, uh, go with Leopold first. All right. So remind me, I'm saying who has the highest hex number for me right now. Yes. And then they choose to highlight one of your steps. So it's a tie between Solomon and Phoenix. Cause I don't think I had any hex changes at the end of last game. Okay. So each of you can, uh, highlight one. You're muted, Ryan. Um, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to go for sharp. All right. All right. I, I'm going to say hot. Hot. <laughs> Love it. All right. Uh, so that's going to be Leo being hot and sharp this time. Uh, like a, like a warm knife. Uh, Tessa, that is, that is your. I have several of those. Yeah. Why are they warm? <laughs> I keep them about my person. 
<laughs> uh, Tesla, what is, uh, who do you have high sex with? Um, do you guys want to guess? Is it Solomon? It's a birdie. Yeah, it's birdie. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> cool, I'll do both of yours. Oh no! Uh, actually, no, uh, who's second highest? Um, Leopold. All right. Okay, um... Let's go with cool. Cool. All right. Uh, I'm going to highlight your hard. Yeah. Uh, and da, 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 Solomon. Muted again. Uh, I got a four-way tie with everyone besides Bernie. <laughs> okay. Let's... Um, who hasn't done one yet? Uh... Why don't you do uh, do one, Garrett, and I'll I'll pick the other. Uh, let's see. For Saul, I'm gonna go weird. I want Saul to do something weird this time. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna highlight your sh sharp. And uh, Garrett. That would be Tesla. I'm gonna do sharp. Okay. Uh, and then I'll pick your cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, Phoenix. That would be Leopold. All right. Oh, it's going to be good for this first scene. Um, let's go with hot. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then I will highlight your... Not highlight your cool. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then last, it's going to be Birdie. Uh, we'll go ahead and do hers. Uh Tesla, you're number one, or you're you're at the top of her list. So, what do you want to highlight for Birdie? Hard. All right, hard, and then I will highlight her. Not highlight her sharp. All right, cool. So that is everyone. We'll go ahead. Uh, let's just go ahead and truck right through this, Solomon. Uh, your rule, your your rule is uncontested right now. So, if you want to do your your role. Sure, I would. Um, I'm going to roll for wealth, and I rolled a 10. Damn. Uh, which means on a 10 plus, you have a surplus, but choose one want. Wait, no, no, no. No, just have, you have a surplus. You just have the surplus. Sorry, yeah. I read it for, uh, ahead. <laughs> <There's a laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah, well, that's, well, that'll come into play. So I'll, I'll make, a, make a note of that. Uh, things going well for Solomon's Hold right now. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, as far as everyone's barter then, so we talked about there's a new move that we're going to be doing, a custom move we're going to do that I uh, lovingly named uh, Daddy's Favorite um, that we're going to be playing with going forward. So uh, Solomon, is the, you have the option uh, to offer living expenses, barter for living expenses, uh, for anyone that is within your hold right now, which is everyone. Um, is there anyone you'd like to make that offer to? Um, we'll do uh, Tesla. Okay. Anybody else, or just Tesla? Uh, I guess I guess everyone who's uh, mm, 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 mm. yeah. I'll just say for everyone who's here. I don't know if that includes Phoenix because he's out of town. Um, Phoenix would still count. This is sort of loosely. Oh, just a loose thing. Yeah. This uh, isn't yeah. Like that. You're giving it to them. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, for everyone, we'll just do everyone for now. Um, no strings attached currently. Um, okay, so being, yeah. being, uh, very altruistic, just, just offering everybody enough to cough, co uh, cover their living expenses. Oh, well, I guess it's, that, it's very calculated though. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah that in and of itself feels like a manipulation. You know, I don't think yeah. you have to explain any more than that. I think that that works perfectly. So, uh, so as of right now, nobody has to spend barter uh I, I i mean that pretty much sort of sums up how well things are going for the train yard right now uh so awesome uh in which case 
we'll go ahead and jump into the game. So recapping what's happened in the past few days uh, within uh, Solomon's Train Yard and this region of Dakota, uh, the survivors, bandits, whatever you guys want to call yourselves, uh, train conductors, I'm not really sure at this point, uh, you... Sure. <laughs> have been dealing in with one in one way, shape, or form with uh, some threat from ex some external threat from a group uh, called Black Dogs Gang. Uh, there had been an attack against Salma's train yard, uh, where they attempted to convince one of the members of your community, Solomon, to steal uh, some some goods from your uh, com compound and uh, luckily with some quick thinking from all the members of your of your community you're able to stop it defeat or fend off uh, black dogs gang uh, who seem to be doing pretty well despite some um, past uh, off-screen uh, justice that you had dealt to them uh, you regrouped after this event uh, all kind of accomplishing your own tasks at this point. Uh, you attempted to interrogate one of the prisoners that you had uh, taken during this time and had a bit of a an interesting encounter with the psychic maelstrom in that moment. Three of you suffering visions um, as there's a surge of psychic or supernatural energy um, made you relive all, uh, Solomon, uh, Leopold and Garrett relive some of your most uh, gruesome memories. You were fine otherwise, uh, but I think you all had a pretty hard time with that. Um, after you recovered, the survivor took their own life. Birdie double tapped and made sure that they were super dead. Uh, and you regrouped from there. Uh, we had some conversations between Bertie and Tesla, and uh, we had some interesting changes in dynamic between uh, Garrett and Solomon, uh, all culminating in Garrett deciding to kind of take his boys out on a run uh, to gain some, kind of let them loose for a bit, getting a little bit cooped up. Uh, Leo made his way south to Ford's farm uh, on a bike, uh, and Phoenix made his way to Longmire, uh, an attempt to patch things up, kind of solidify borders, uh, at this point. And we saw our last scene of the evening was, uh, Phoenix making his way into Longmire, uh, meeting with the matron of the city, uh, Twist, who introduced you to a fellow named Elijah. Uh, and that is where we, we ended our session. Uh, but before we get back into Phoenix's moment here, I think we're doing a bit of a time jump. Um, <clears throat> and we sort of get this flashback to about six hours earlier. Phoenix, your car goes speeding off into the... Uh, into the near setting sun off towards the the west where you're making your way towards longmire just to uh, clarify i left on my bike i didn't take the car okay yeah on your on your bike uh so uh kicking up a bit of gravel on the way you rip underneath the the doors the the, the gates of the train yard and uh off towards longmire um as we pick up with uh the scene here it's it's solomon uh watching the kind of commotion below from your your office um after everyone has left and kind of gone on to their, their separate ways when a uh one of your enforcers uh, young man probably recently joined up or recently old enough to kind of uh, by and kind of be recruited within your kind of little uh, community here. Um, family's been with you for a while. Uh, good people. Uh, young kid's name is... 
uh, name is Dirk. Uh, <clears throat> he comes up towards your office door, almost walks in, and stands back for a second and knocks. Uh, come on in. Uh, he pulls off his helmet and says, uh, sir, sorry, sir. Um, uh, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, there's something that the, the boys wanted you to come down and see. Uh, we, we found something that uh, well, we don't really know what the hell it is. All right. Um, he kind of motions uh, or kind of walks ahead of you a bit. Um, I'm just going to throw on a jacket, try to cover up my wound, <laughs> zip it up a little bit. Yeah, okay. I don't think anybody is. Uh, is I, think, I don't think most people in your community are, are aware of kind of the, the severity of your wound at this point. So, okay. um, um, yeah, then I just tie my uh, my my belt, my holster belt, and I uh, follow him out. OK. Uh, he leads you down the steps and as he does, he begins kind of chatting with you and just kind of go rambling on and on. He's uh, as he's one your way through the cr- uh, through the train yard, you hear the uh, the sounds of the work going on in the workshop, people still rebuilding, kind of refortifying the structures all around. Um, and he says, uh, sir, we were we were on the, the, the northern gate here, uh, fortifying some of the areas. We, we had some rust on one of the train cars, you see, and uh, well, Cask wanted us to, to rebuild the area, kind of pull out some of the some of the fortifications we had there previously. And uh, uh, I, see, as we were digging around, it kind of winds around. You see there's a like large group kind of gathered over towards the, uh, the northern area of the compound. And uh, mostly it's your your men kind of keeping people at bay uh he says uh casks seems to think it's something pretty important and, and doesn't want many people seeing it uh oh, it, as you walk up you can see cask is there he says i, I guess I'll, I'll leave you there anyway thank you sir uh and uh, he kind of salutes a bit uh, and goes back to his uh, his group or his uh, kind of patrol there and uh cask walks up to you and says <clears throat> so cask <clears throat> he uh kind of has a stoic look for a second but you see uh, kind of a grin beginning to crawl across his face and he says this is pretty badass don't keep me in suspense what you talking <laughs> about boy uh, he says, come look at this, uh, and winds you over to the gate. Um, he says, we were digging around down here, uh, trying to facet some of the support beams so we could get some more, uh, some more leverage against it, keep another incident like we had before. Um, we found something buried in the mud. Um... And as he walks you over, you can see there is a large pit kind of dug into the ground here. And uh, in that pit, you see poking out from it, there is the kind of back of a slight gray, smooth uh, train car, but not like the other rusted cargo containers here. This one is is heavy duty, no rust, no degrading on it um, is, it looks looks much different from the others. Looks looks more high tech. Uh, he says, <clears throat> "Wait till you see what's inside." Uh, and he jumps down into the pit, uh, expecting you to follow, um, unaware of your, your injury. Is there any dignified way for me to get down there? <laughs> um, Maybe like a, a rope or you could probably something. Get it. There, there's some ropes going down. You could. Uh, All right. All right. Um, I guess it's like ten feet down. You said at least. Yeah, like ten feet down. Yeah, I don't know. I'm an old man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can get a rope and then just like, uh, old man rappel down the side. I think they help you out a bit. Again, I think I think many of them probably have been with you long enough. They still kind of. They sort of see, you know, sort of badass Solomon, probably who came out from the wastes and started this place a bit, uh, and and I think maybe keeping up that that appearance a bit. Uh, they help you though, and they give you the rope and kind of lower you down. You got one foot in in one in a loop tied at the end, uh, so it, it, yeah. it's, 
<laughs> it's not that bad. Uh, yeah, you're it, kind of holding onto and balancing yourself. You do feel that kind of pull yeah. at the at the stitchings on the on your in your wound. Um, the cask uh, kind of walks up to the entryway. Just, the whole thing's kind of uh, tilted downwards uh, of this this cargo container. Um, and there, you see, there's some writing on the side of it, but you're not can't quite make out what it is but there is an emblem and the emblem looks like one of uh like a bird like an eagle um with some sort of facet like crest around it almost um and he says now we we kept this under wraps as we were digging it up because uh we didn't want to any garrett's boys seeing it because figured this is your property uh may want to deal with this as quickly as possible uh, before they get back. Uh, but he walks you up to it and you pull yourself up and look down to the, the cargo container and what you see there is racks and, and crates, kind of some of them pushed over and, and bits and pieces and all sorts of stuff scattered around. But what you see there is weaponry, uh, body armor, um, enough munitions to probably uh, to, to supply a, a sizable force there enough to probably give some more able-bodied people near compound compound some uh, uh, some ability to do some damage uh, and he kind of he's holding his way he kind of cask is like halfway into it just holding himself up with one massive arm uh, as he's sort of halfway in the slanted interior of the car container and just looking down at the flashlight his hand just sort of scanning over it and then looks back to you with that same shit eating grin on his face well, I'd say this is some sort of divine providence wouldn't you uh, he he clicks off the flashlight and says, "I say so, sir." Should we get the stuff taken out of here? Get everybody outfitted. Hell yeah, cask. <laughs> On it, boss. Uh, and he actually like lets go of the side of the moment, kind of slides down, gives a whistle behind. Him, he says, "Suit up, boys." Um, and you see here the rest of the men outside kind of excitedly being to throw down some ropes and, and gather things to together to begin to loot it and you kind of after getting yourself out of the watch watch they pull out just i mean rifles and and ammo and and grenades and body armor and helmets and uh, i mean just a just a treasure trove in there yeah um yeah okay all right well uh, i think uh I think Tesla's going to be excited to see what we found here. <laughs> uh, and you, you watch as they pull everything out. And everyone seems very excited about this. And uh, you, I guess, uh, as a result of this, your uh, your gang is going to increase in size, right? Mm-hmm. So how many men are you at now? Forty. Forty. All right. Uh, so... That is the scene that we begin on as we pan away from this kind of cluster here of, of watching this uh, this treasure being unearthed. Uh, we zoom back across the uh, the treetops, uh, across the open plains as the sun is beginning to set. The dust kicked up, and we come to that uh, not so sleepy cowboy refuge town of, uh, of Longmire. Uh, and as we head up the steps, the uh, kind of through the interior, you see the dark club uh, atmosphere kind of taking hold, uh, probably a little bit of like a, like a free, uh, like a, I think, uh, like a time-lapse motion of people rushing in and grabbing their drinks and uh, as the sun is setting. And then uh, as everything returns to its normal time, we, find ourselves up at the third floor of this establishment sitting at a table with Phoenix, Twist, and Elijah. As Elijah shakes your hand, Phoenix, and sits back in his chair <coughs> says You're the Phoenix, right? The one and only. <laughs> I've heard a story or two about you. Oh, and what ones would those be? 
Uh, well, the way people talk around here, they say you're the best driver in a hundred square miles. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> Confident. I like that. So, Phoenix. Uh, Twist introduced us. I guess I'm not quite sure why you're here. Let's talk. Find out a few things maybe about what plans people have for where I'm living. I'll be honest, I'm not here to lie to anyone. If I find out what I can, I do. If I don't, I guess I'll just head home. Well, I'd say that it's... <clears throat> uh, well, I'd say it's Providence that you're here at the same time as me. See, I was just thinking that... Uh, well... Me and my group could use a little bit of help. Wouldn't suppose that you're up for hire still. Are you still working over for, uh, for Saul at the train yard? To be honest, I work for Saul because he pays me. If you've got a better price, better place for me to live, sure, we can work out a deal. He, uh, he kind of smiles and sits back and, and takes the, the glass on the table and uh, has a, a, a slow sip of it. Um, he, uh, as he sets it down and crosses his finger, he looks back across the table, you have these those piercing blue eyes. And he says, well, tell me how things going over in the train yard right now. Uh, some of the people are, well, worse for wear. I suppose that's common knowledge given people coming here and sharing their woes. Uh, he looks over at Twist and she shrugs and smiles and says, ain't that the truth? And takes a drink as well. Um, he says, I have to say I was, uh, I was rather disappointed in the way things went last week. Between uh, our groups, that that poor man, uh, Ollie, I think his name was. That was the name. I'm going to tell it to you straight, Phoenix. I come here on a divine mission. One given to me by the highest authority itself. Now, I know that there are good people over in the train yard. People like yourself. Find yourselves caught up in all this nonsense. Black Dog is more than willing to offer you a deal. A job place to call home and uh, well enough gas to fuel your ride for as long as you need to go you see he understands that well sin evil It's tempting. It's contagious. It works its way into people without them really knowing. We know there are good people over in the train yard. People like yourself. We're willing to give them a second chance. All they have to do is ask for the prophet's forgiveness. We do have a job for you, Phoenix. And that's to help us help you. What's the job? A 
go back to the train yard. Tell... Tell Solomon. Tell all the people there that if they truly seek the light of forgiveness and the grace of the prophet themselves, they can find it. In, oh, I think about three or four weeks time, they should be able to make the pilgrimage to vacuum themselves and they can find forgiveness and the holy light to exercise the demons within within the walls of our church. Oh no. Oh. Could not handle the beat. <laughs> um, we'll be right back. All right. While we find Kyle. <laughs> All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, sorry about that, small internet hiccup. Uh, so, continuing the uh, the scene here uh, between Elijah and Phoenix, um, Elijah has made you this offer to uh, to bring people to the uh, to Vacan uh, to Black Dog's compound. Um, well, honestly, generally hope for something a bit more exciting, but. I can deliver a message that's easy enough. Uh, he says, <coughs> if you do this for, uh, lose my voice, if you do this for, uh, for the prophet and for, uh, and show your loyalty to him, then uh, I believe you have a place with us and there'll be much more excitement to come. Now, there is an addendum to this. While the prophet does offer forgiveness to most, there are few things that, well, the Lord cannot abide. Now, as I said, most within uh, the train yard are good, righteous people. Saul himself, we believe to be misguided, but redeemable. However, the deepest circles of hell are reserved for those that betray their fellow man. I'm afraid we can't offer that same forgiveness towards Garrett, his mutts, Tesla, or even that witch birdie. They'll burn one way or another. We'll see to that. But the rest of you don't have to. As long as you see the air of your ways and come seek redemption at the prophet's feet. I'm sure I can pass the word along. I believe you will. One way or another, everyone's going to come looking for redemption to be cleansed within the waters of baptism that we offer. He looks over to Twist. Gives, um, gives a nod and says, Twist, it's been good seeing you. And Phoenix, I hope I see you again. I'm sure I'll see you soon. For now, yeah. um, he reaches at his uh, to his feet and uh, pulls out a kind of a hefty uh, like a satchel. Like uh, I guess it somewhere like a rucksack or a backpack and he tosses it or kind of slides it across the table for you. He says, for now, I believe that'll make up uh, our down payment for the uh, services that we are willing to provide and the uh, the job that we're offering. Open it up, check the contents, give it a shake, make sure it's just what I'm assuming accounts as barter. Yeah, it's the equivalent of, I'd say probably around three barter. Um, and, uh, but it's a combination of, uh, sort of rations and, um, some medical supplies, um, 
and some other like bits and pieces and stuff that you could probably find a lot of use for for your car. I mean, it's whatever you want, but uh, yeah, it's it's Ottoman's worth about three barter. Sorry, the cat wants to get out. Um, That's okay. <sighs> very much appreciated. I'm sure to pass it pass the word along. Uh, he he smiles and and uh, stands up from the table, um, gives a, uh, a a nod towards towards you and towards uh, Twist and uh, makes his way out of the bar, um, or at least down the stairs. Um, Twist is sort of leaning back with her arms crossed, uh, looking across at you, Phoenix, and says. That's how I expected that to go. Honestly, me neither. But hey, payment for an easy job is something I'm not going to ignore. I wouldn't recommend ignoring it. The way I see it, there's a there's a storm coming, and we're going to be trying to be on the right side of it here. So, uh, listen, you seem like a nice young man. I re- would suggest you do the same. I'll keep that in mind, but look, while I'm here, I might as well enjoy myself before heading back maybe in the morning. Of course. I'm I'm sure a fine lady not like yourself knows where to have the best time in town. (laughs) Uh, She kind of looks around and she says, well, nowhere else but right here. Uh, and she gives a motion across the across the uh, bar room, and uh, there's some drinks brought over for you. Um, a large sort of um, well, you've seen some people smoking around here. There's actually like hookah pipe uh, is is brought over to you. Um, she motions over, and some very attractive men and women come over to sit at the table with uh, with your uh, little party here, and they provide you with enough entertainment for the evening uh not making you spend anything for as being a friend of Saul and having brought a nice bottle of uh of scotch um to the to the table as well um so uh you do have a good evening cheers cheers and she she pulls up a shot too and takes it I don't have a shot so I'm gonna drink out of this (laughs) nice unlabeled soft drink Delicious. Uh, that <laughs> I think that ends that scene, though. Um, so I think the other one that we have to resolve then is Leo. Uh, you're making your way south to to Ford's farm. So um, what we kind of see is moving away from the from Longmire here. That thumping of the the bass from the the club below kind of fading. Um, as the uh, sun begins to rise in the distance in that same time-lapsed form and we zoom over across uh, to the south where we watch a, uh, a bike, uh, a lone bike, I believe. You're, are you by yourself right now? Yeah. Um, arriving at the outskirts of Ford's farm. Um, it's here that uh, I think we've seen this once before. This this old kind of water treatment facility, this old industrial place that's overgrown uh, and being kind of incorporated into this sort of farm uh, uh, farmland uh, that is being repurposed for the uh, the Ford family. And as you approach the main gates, uh, you see the same. Uh, boys out front that you saw before kind of tending to uh, some some relatives of Ford um, kind of tending to the front gates with their munitions uh, kind of as quaint as it might be in comparison to the train guard. Uh, they see you approaching and the uh, the boy that you saw before uh, Oswald, this uh, kind of younger kind of ratty looking um, probably early 20 something uh, young man uh, it's kind of standing in this crow's nest area and and looks out over at you as you come riding up the the motorcycle's engine cutting off uh, and he says uh, what what do you, what do you want I come bearing a gift from Solomon for Ford there's not supposed to be another shipment for another week. 
Well, that is something that I would like to discuss with Ford, but even if that cannot be arranged, this is, as I said, a gift. All right, I can get Pa. No funny business, though. Um, he gives a whistle down to one of the other young men that's tending the gate, and they pull on the chains and kind of pull the, the gate open. Um, and they they let you enter. Um, you kick on the, the motorcycle again and come riding past them. They watch you as you, as you zoom past further into the complex. Uh, you come into sort of the main... Uh, square of this this large kind of farming community here um and uh, there are a few dozen people kind of around most of them extended relatives of ford and his family um and uh as you cut off the and kind of pulling it into the side and getting it out of the main thoroughfare there's a there's a a wagon pulled by one of these bison uh, that makes its way past you, carrying large bundles of, of hay uh, further or grass into the um, one of the silos there. And uh, you hear a raspy voice call out from across the complex from behind you as you're watching this, this uh, cart pass. It says, And I told Saul that I didn't ha- wouldn't have anything for him for another week now. What are you doing here, boy? Greetings to you as well, Ford. Uh, as I told your boy Oswald at the gate, I come bearing a gift. And I'll reach into my jacket and pull out the pouch with the bath salts in it. Or, they're not actually bath salts. I just keep calling them that. <laughs> I was about to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> I don't think that that's what I don't think I wrote that into this game. Um, yeah, you so you turn around to um, to see Ford, this this hunched over, crepid looking old man with these uh, overalls, uh, sort of typical like farmer uh, as we would see them. I mean, it needs everything but a pitchfork. And instead of the pitchfork, though, he's got a gnarled kind of walking cane that he's using to to pretty quickly and spry for an older uh, man uh, make his way up to you. And uh, as you hold out this bag uh, with the salts in it, uh, he looks at it and says, what, What's that? You may recall that upon our last visit, we had a new uh, member of our little group with us. She noticed that uh, you may be dealing with some arthritis etc i'm looking yeah arthritis is what i have in my notes some arthritis and she said that this may soothe what ails you you are to be careful when handling this it can burn upon contact with flesh but just wash your hands and you'll be fine but you are to mix a teaspoon of it with a liter of water and drink it each morning before eating and according to our wonderful angel that should uh ease your arthritic pains he takes the bag from you and kind of opens it up and looks into it i have no idea how it will taste but aren't the best medicines always a bit bitter says uh, sounds like a bunch of hocus pocus to me. Uh, he he kind of looks like he's about to give it back to you, and I'll give it a try. Uh, pokes it, uh, kind of puts it in one of his pockets. Uh, says, "Well, if this gives me the runs or anything, I'm coming back to you, and Saul's going to pay twice as much for the next shipment." I will be sure to let both him and Birdie know that I'm sure she would be mortified if this did not do exactly what she said it would. Fine, then. He stands there and kind of looks at you for a second and says, Is there anything else you can get going? There were actually a couple more items that I wish to discuss as long as I'm here. As I said, that is a gift. Uh, you know, a token of Solomon's continued appreciation of this ongoing relationship. But that said, I would like to continue what we discussed last time in terms of the representatives from Black Dog who came to visit. Hmm. 
I know you said that you don't want to, that Solomon has been good to you and that you were not swayed, but I would like to uh, follow up on who talked with you. So any descriptions or if you know names? Um, he kind of, well, it looks like he's uh, kind of shifting back and forth. So, we're out of talk. We better do, I, I've got things to do. I'm not just going to stand here and let you yap at me. So if you're going to talk to me, you best walk quickly. Uh, and he kind of begins moving away from you, uh, uh, kind of towards one of the silos and uh, kind of following his daily chore routine. Um, as he makes it uh, one of the big kind of, uh, factory warehouses uh, he heads inside and you can smell and hear the the bison within there again he says nah, i don't know what much good it is telling you everything that i talked to uh that young man about before but uh uh like i said i'm not looking to cause any problems here or cause any distrust between soul and i of course but uh Well, Black Dog makes a uh, a convincing proposition, mostly in the way of veiled threats. But and he walks over uh, and begins like picking up uh, bundles of hay, kind of tossing them out into the uh, kind of the the pen that all these bison are in. Um, I'll move up and help. Seems to appreciate that. Uh, he says. The boy who came here, his name was Lash, huh? Told us that uh, this prophet, Black Dog, we referred to him as, was uh, willing to protect us from judgment or wrath or whatever it was he was spouting on about. Now, my family and I were, were God fearing folk, always have been. I don't much know anything about this prophet, but I don't want to get caught in any war between uh, the train yard and this black dog. Yes, it would be best for all involved if the fewer people in between us and the black dogs, the better. But go on, please. Well, he offered us protection. He said that we'd be spared when this uh, judgment came. He said all we had to do was provide them with the same deal we provide Saul with uh, enough food to feed their, their community. They'd pick up their shipments uh, once a month. And, uh, well, in exchange, we'd have their protection. Now, I told him that I'm not a that I keep my word and that I'm not going to stop doing business with Saul just because I do business with them. They didn't seem too happy about that, but Saul and I had never had an exclusive arrangement. Otherwise, those people over in Longmire would start long ago. But things are growing a little thin around here. There are only so many people we can feed with what we produce within our, our farm here. And we're going to have to stop cutting out someone somewhere. And that's why I brought that to you before. That if Saul was willing to offer us protection from uh, this black dog, then uh, perhaps we don't have to cut him out. But if he can't keep his own, and believe me, rumors have reached us here that... uh. There was an incident in the train yard not too long back after you left. And I'm starting to get word that Saul's getting up in years. Might not be able to protect everyone like he used to. Well, I can assure you things at the train yard are currently completely under control. Uh, in fact, there is enough of a surplus that I know you were saying supplies are thin and... Uh, it's not time for another shipment yet, but any little bit might be able to uh, be of aid 
for us, and I can assure you, very soon Black Dog will no longer be a concern for you. <sighs> okay, so I think at this point with the conversation, we're going to make a roll for this. Um, sure. I think this counts as like a seduce, manipulate, bluff, you know, sort of thing. I mean, you're not. I mean, I guess it depends on. I, I don't yeah, think you're no. bluffing right now. This is, yeah, it's yeah. more just it's manipulate has such a strong connotation. But if we were to do are. the, it would be a persuasion role in D and D. Yeah, I, I think. But this is a little manipulating. I mean, you're you're yeah. telling him mm-hmm. what he wants to hear, given yep. reason. So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna say ahead. yeah. Go ahead and roll plus hot. Okay, which is my minus two, but it's also highlighted. <laughs> uh, that's a six minus two for a four. All right. Uh, yeah, he as he throws the last bundle, and they kind of made the rounds through these containers at this point, and he pulls up a, a small bucket and flips it over and, and sits down on top of it and kind of creaking as he does and rubbing his knees and he says listen ah Leo rat I think that's your name when you came before Leo Paul, yes you seem like a well you seem like an odd boy but I, I you seem nice enough ah uh, I just don't know. I don't know if uh, if Saul can pretend to say more. And you have to understand. And I would tell Saul this if I could. But I have to think about my family first. My honor is important, but my family's safety means the most to me. And if I can't protect them, then what good am I? Now, question, because this may actually become important momentarily. Uh, That failed, or that roll got me enough experience for an improvement. Does that happen immediately, or how does that work? I think it happens immediately. If you have something ready, then you can can go for it right away. Well, because the roll 20 chat is telling me to do brain or stuff to him, and I'm thinking of taking the move that lets me more or less brainwash people. Um... But, um, I don't know if I'm going to do that yet, but just making sure it's an option. (laughs) Um, if you're looking at the move list, it's the in-brain puppet strings. Okay, let me, uh, let me pull that up. I just want to say that the whole Roll20 chat is not voting for this. (laughs) Most of the Roll20 chat. (laughs) Uh, the puppet strings. Let's see. That's in the that brainer moves. Mm-hmm. Which one is it called? Oh yeah. Uh, in brain puppet strings. You know, time physical intimacy. And you can replace time physical intimacy with your yep, glove. The glove. Um. All right. Uh. Yeah, you can certainly try to do that if you want. Yeah. Um, Depends on how overt you're going to try to be on this. Yeah, no. Um, let's see. Now, the reason I brought that up, I, I think I interrupted what you slash forward were saying, but it sounded like he was about to end the deal with Solomon. And if it go, if it does sound like that, I think I'm going to try this. And if not, I will leave things be. I mean, at this point, you're getting that impression whether or not you want to let this conversation proceed forward. Uh, that's that's up to you. Um, yeah, if I'm getting that impression, then as I go to turn and toss the next bail in, I will sort of stumble and brush him with the violator glove then. Okay, so here's... I'm going to make you act under fire here because you didn't do too well in the previous roll. Yep. Um, and this is gonna I, I'm gonna say he you know he says he trusts you but I think he's <laughs> Does also Does anyone trust Leo? <laughs> yeah um, so go to roll plus cool Okay That's a miss that's a six five plus one Alright so I think this is what happens here then um, You 
go to kind of stumble forward and giving this like elaborate show of, of trying to, uh, to to stumble and kind of reach out towards him. I don't think it's as, as covert as, as Leo wants it to be. And you end up just sort of reaching out at his face, at which point he very quickly, again, for an old man, kind of smacks your hand out of the way with his, um, with his cane and kind of staggers backwards a bit, falling back. Uh, and he says, well, what are you doing, boy? Now, if you're trying to do something funny, I, I've, I've been working with Saul for some time, and if he's sending someone here to, to take care of me, now, I, I'm... Boys, get in here! Uh, and he yells out uh, into the container, out like the, the open bay doors, this, um, uh, this silo, and you begin to hear some people coming in through the doors. Uh, you see a couple of... Uh, bigger, younger, uh, kind of farm hands, uh, coming in, kind of looking around saying, what's, what's going on, Pa? Uh, this one, you know, backing away, you know, hands clearly visible. Um, uh, and I think at this point he's taking a step back from you and the others are, are coming in. He says, no. Ford, I can assure you if Solomon wanted you taken care of, he would not have sent me, or at least not that you would have seen coming. But I understand that things are tense right now. I will leave you be. Again, those salts from our angel are a gift. A teaspoon with a liter of water. Take it in the morning before eating anything. That'll help the arthritis. I will go ahead and take my leave now. He kind of, as you say that, he reaches, takes the, but he says, uh, he, he takes the pout. He says, I'm going to eat this poison that you're just that you're clearly trying to get me to take here. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what kind of madness is overtaking Solomon at this point. But I can tell you our deal's off. Well, at least until the black dogs are all dead. And then we'll bring you their heads on pikes and show you that Solomon is indeed a man of his word. With that, I just go brush past the farm hands, get on the bike and start heading back. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think. Mm, man. I think what happens is they, they let you leave and, and you see, uh, you see Ford take his, take the pouch that Marty gave and just kind of chuck it to the side. The salt's only scattering across the ground there. Um, and uh, the two kind of larger farm hands follow you as you make your way to the, keep you very close eye on you as you make your way towards the, um, toward, back towards your bike. Uh, you get on the bike uh, as they're standing uncomfortably close to you uh, and go riding off towards the gates. They let you out the gates and let you on your way uh, without another word um, to report back to Solomon. Uh, and I think that's uh, that's where that scene ends. So at this point, I think we're gonna pick back up at at the at the yard. Now I want to get on this because I remember. Uh, we we're talking about this last session, Garrett. You were going out to run a gig to to kind of earn earn a bit of a bit of barter. Uh, you can still do that, even though your expense has been covered. If you'd like, um, what is the what 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 do you what's your gang doing? What do you we take? We go broad strokes with this and sort of go with it. But like for the gig? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Oh, they're they're going on a mercenary run. Okay, uh, I guess what what do they do? Like what what is the um, Who are they doing the job for? Give me some names. Well, it says it says in the thing that it's like DM's discretion of an NPC. Yeah. So, I, like, I think do you have more, an NPC in mind? No, I think it's more interesting. I want you to tell me the story of what okay. what they do because I think uh, that's more interesting. Um. All right. Can I have the world map again? Because I was looking sure. at it beforehand and saw a few things. Yeah. 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 Cool. 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 Um. Where is it? Um, is this map kind of, sort of, um, to scale from, like, where Solomon's train yard is to yeah. places? Cool. Um, what is the Growling Gulch? 
Uh, Rally Gulch, sort of the the wastelands. Um, I'd say it's a it's rather unexplored, uninhabited area um, that is is named that way because the uh, I think the key aspect of the the gulch is that there is a lot of wildlife in the area that isn't necessarily um, friendly or scared of people. Uh, a lot of wolves, bears uh, that have been probably mutated a bit or at least have gone a bit barrel uh, beyond what a typical wild animal would be like uh, overtly attacking people um, and it's sort of the extent that people I think from the train yard tend to travel to the alright cool so I was thinking that there would be a NPC somewhere and I can come up with a name if you need me to um, that has a like the growling gulch to me seems, especially with what you said, seems kind of like almost Saharan, like um, radioactive Saharan desert. So like there's probably nomads that go through there and kind of make their living, but no one really wants to bother them. Um, they are, this NPC that I'm going to go do this gig for is having a problem with one of those traveling groups and wants me to take them out because they keep raiding their farm or their stronghold and they're not big enough to do anything about it. Okay. So maybe there's a smaller community, maybe of maybe a 20 or so people uh, to the south of, of the train yard, probably within Solomon's territory, but not directly, you know, kind of protected by Solomon. Um, you go, uh, you're going to accomplish his job, essentially taking out some, some threats to them. Okay, that's fair enough. That's pretty straightforward. And they're offering you some, some goods in exchange. So what I'm going to have you do is just generally roll... Uh, I guess, how how does how does Garrett and his gang, how do they do these raids? Is it just guns blazing, riding to the fray, and, and hooping and hollering and taking people out? Or is it, like, strategic? Uh, it's more strategic. Um, they Because there's 30 of them, and they know that their bikes are incredibly loud, um, and the gulch is probably, like, hazardous in its own way. Um, they, are, they don't want to wreck anything. They don't want to have any people die by the gulch itself um so they're going to take a day or two to figure out where these people are figure out what their um patterns mannerisms and how big their force is and if they can go in sneak in quietly and then kill everybody cool but at the same time they have enough people in the pack that if it comes down to it they can just raid like a viking would <laughs> Okay, so I, yeah, I think what we'll do to resolve this then is I'll have you roll plus sharp um, rather than typical. And 10. That's pretty good. All right. So, um, I'm trying to decide if this is the first time I want to use the, the temptation roll. Um, Okay, yeah, I think this is a good time to kind of test this out. So here's what I'm gonna say. So you exceed, you you can succeed unequivocally on this and, and take out the take out the, the the threat and get your barter and, and do what you want. I will offer you the choice if you want uh, to, and we can sort of narrate this however you want to, but uh, to take a partial success, uh, and I will give you an XP for it. Um, and we'll sort of role play that as maybe Garrett, maybe to teach his boys a lesson a bit, maybe he holds back on some information. I don't know how you want to go with it or how you see Garrett maybe kind of being tempted a bit here, but uh, I'm going to give you the option to, to take that mixed success if you would like that XP. Um, otherwise, we can go with the, the full success there and you accomplish your job completely. There's a part of me that's like, yes, I want to do this because narratively it would be cool, but Garrett has a reason for doing this. Mm -hmm. um, so he's going to say no to that and just succeed. Okay. 
yeah uh and i think narratively it's fine either way because uh in this circumstance you kind of assert yourself in this uh, as being the the tactician being the leader that that can get things done and, and keep your group safe and fed and also kind of let them uh, let them out a bit so um, um you are able to track down this uh kind of small group of bandits and marauders in this area that call the growling gulch home kind of just on the northern borders of it where they can uh, stay a bit a bit safer and you you come across some of their uh their carnage along the way some some places where they've sort of where they haunt a bit uh and i will track them down to the cave that they call home um and it's there that you set up a nice little ambush for them uh maybe smoking them out a bit literally there uh and as they come out open fire you take out the bada big bada boom you take them all out uh and i would say with that six with that 10 um maybe a few scrapes and bruises along the way but everyone's safe everyone's uh uh, no one dies as a part of this, which I think is a big thing when you when you run these gigs. Um, there's a high turnover rate, I would assume. So uh, you you succeed on that and and perhaps win a bit more of the respect of your of your gang. That maybe some of them faltered, maybe not, but yeah, that's that's where you're at right now. You return to this smaller community. Um, and they pay you for your services. I'm gonna say they give you two barter for it because you do this pretty quick, uh, pretty painlessly. They're pretty impressed, um, so they they pay you for that. All right, well done. Uh, so you're out there for a couple days. So I think what we will do then. Um, yeah, that's only one so we will pick up back at Solomon's train yard as everyone is sort of reconvening there, all of you with your different sort of uh, jobs accomplished, one way, shape, or form. Again, sort of playing with time a bit here. Um, but I'm going to say this might be a day or two later. Um, maybe Solomon's a bit busy and is able to take you guys right away. Oh, Tesla's or something. Can I do something since everyone else got to do something? <laughs> Yeah, well, I was going to get back to the train yard and say that and, and start the scene and you could be there if you wanted. But if there's something you wanted to specifically do, you can definitely go. I just feel like there's like two days I'm not doing anything. I'm not just going to sure. like sit around, especially not if food is scarce. Uh, yeah, I, I think that. Go, go ahead. It was, right, it was like, so that was my want from last session. Does that carry over to the next session if I roll 10 plus? Yeah, I'm going to say that maybe in that uh, in that cargo container, um, you found a lot of like MREs um, in there and it's been enough to sort of sustain a lot of the people. However, like fresh food maybe is still not, you know, haven't had any like fresh meat in a while. Uh, Tesla wanted to maybe contribute to that and kind of help replenish some stocks. Um, or if there's something else, Tesla, you want to do, you can do that too. No, nope, Mama's going hunting. Okay, you want to do do some hunting then. Um, all right, so we don't really have as far as hunting goes. I feel like that's a sharp roll unless you want to make a you want to make a argument. Otherwise, there is literally a a move that's called hunt prey, but it's more for a different sort of circumstance, and that's roll plus cool. Um, so I'm gonna. I'm going to let you kind of describe uh, Tesla's hunting tactics. Is this uh, more of a, you're looking for the biggest, baddest thing you're out there to kill? Is this a sort of a stealth mission or is this purely intellectual getting up and like looking for signs, tracking, finding, you know, looking for the the perfect circumstances to catch your per quarry? No, I, you I think it's more of a stealth mission because I think I go by myself. Mm hmm and I don't want to die. Um, so I think it's more of a gone all day. Um, I don't think it's so much like a, a tracking thing as it is that like I've done this before and sort of know the area and where things like to congregate and essentially we'll just like wait. Okay. Um, I think so. I pointed this out. Are you using your gun? for hunting or do you take one like the hunting rifles from Solomon's collection? Um, I think I probably take a hunting rifle. 
Yeah, your gun would probably obliterate anything you try yeah. to uh, <laughs> try to kill, unless you're going to hunt like rhinos or something, which no, are not. No, rhinos are endangered. Um, there is a large bear population, though, and I think uh, I want to hunt a bear. Do... Yeah, I mean, I think uh, again, this is outside the standard sort of hunting that we would see for food in like a modern uh, sense. Uh, bear is a lot of meat, a lot of muscle. Might be pretty tough, might not be the most fun meat to eat, but there's a lot of it. Um, and I think you start, you, you try to track down a bear. So go ahead and make a uh, roll plus cool. Okay. Does this count as acting under fire or standing overwatch? I only ask because I have an ability. Um... I'm going to say no in this circumstance because okay. it is more of you just like trying to avoid detection. Sounds good. Sounds good. And the, the, you're essentially rolling under fire. Um, yeah. Was that, was that when I act under before? fire? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Never mind. I, uh, I'm not thinking. Yes, you are acting under fire. That's right. Because that's, I the have fire battle is, hardened, which is when I act under fire or stand overwatch, I roll hard instead of cool. That's what I was asking. Oh, well. There you go. Uh, yeah, you do roll. You would roll hard then, because yeah, as far as stealth works in this game, it is essentially you do something under fire, and the the fire is being caught. Yay! Pew pew. Um, that's an eight. An eight. Okay. So, partial success. Um, so describe to me how you approach this this quarry. Uh, you you've been able to track down a bear, um, or track down a uh, yeah. You've been able to track down a bear that is sizable enough and, and worthy of, of hunting. Um, how do you see Tesla kind of approaching this? Um, I think she like favors the high ground, and so I think I probably try to skirt around where I think the bear is going to be and try to get up either like in a very large tree or um, if they're like hills or something I try to get up kind of on top of something so I can shoot down okay and I hide um, yeah. I try to camouflage myself as best I can which is why all she all the stuff that she wears is all Excuse me. Um, is all like leathers and like reinforced stuff, so it's all pretty like brown and green and. All right. So so here's I think what happens. So as far as your your mixed success here, you you get yourself hidden, uh, and that's sort of the success part is that you get yourself into the tree, into a safe vantage point, and you watch as this bear approaches in the forest. You've been tracking it for a while. You manage to head it off and get downwind, and it. It comes lumbering into a small clearing, and you you aim with the rifle. Take your breath. You pull the trigger. This gun is not the one you're used to firing. And I think you overcompensate for the kickback on it a bit, and you miss. Um, Guess I'll just die then. In which case, the bear, uh, now in the clearing, and the bullet the bullet strikes the ground, whoosh, kind of rears up, uh, and looks up towards the tree, uh, and uh, begins to like stand up on its back feet, looking up at you, and gives out that like massive like, oh no, <sighs> I'm fighting a bear. Uh, do we need to stop? Yeah. All right. One second, guys. Sorry. And we're back. Uh, we're gonna bring Kyle back in a bit. We're gonna finish the bear fight as we're all doing our bear mannerisms. So, uh, Tesla, bear is bearing down on you. What do you do? Oh God, does it like it knows where I am now though, right? Oh yeah. It's I don't cool. feel like I succeeded at anything. <laughs> Um, you succeeded this... in not having it just attack you. You, Great. you get a chance to do something. Do I? I probably brought some of my other stuff with me, right? I think. And yeah. Just bring yeah. this I one, think... like, 
terrible gun that I should. I'm gonna have say used. you probably don't have your you probably don't have your big rifle, but you have your other weapons. Okay, you might not have the grenade launcher. Oh man, I was <laughs> I just grenade the bear. Um, okay, I, I, I don't that do that. Thing. How is the bear close enough for me to just like get a shotgun blast right in yeah, its yeah, bear? Yeah, yeah. You, you want to shoot with a shotgun? Yeah. Okay, so um, describe to me how you're doing. Are, are you just are you just sitting in the tree waiting until it gets close enough and shooting? Like, or are you jump down there to just like? No, I, d I, d I don't immediately abandon hiding in a tree from a bear. Um, I am going to swing the I, don't know, I swing the hunting rifle over my back and I'll like pull up my shotgun and try to aim for like its chest, I guess. Okay. And take a shot. Oh man! Right. Now I'm I fighting a bear with a shotgun. <laughs> okay, I think we'll uh, we'll count this as just well. Uh, let's see. If you're doing combat with him. I think it's gonna be a roll plus hard. Okay, um, cool. And let's... I'll find the move that this is gonna correspond with. That's the thing I'm good at. <laughs> yeah, you're seizing the bear by force. Is what we're <laughs> I am. Yes. Fourteen. Oh. Oh, eat it, bear! I'm gonna eat you. All right. You know what I'm gonna do here, though, is that I I do want to see a little bit of drama here, so I'm gonna offer you a temptation <laughs> um, to. Uh, well, here's what I'm gonna offer: two XP uh, to take a miss instead. A miss? Mm hmm. But you get two XP. Um. I don't want to die from a bear fight. Um, How much armor you got? I have two. For two XPs? For two XPs? Okay, okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. I love it. All right. So here's what happens. You uh, bring out your shotgun. Um, you aim down <laughs> towards the bear as it's lumbering across the ground at you. <laughs> uh, and as you aim uh, down towards it, <laughs> shit, uh, you realize that your gun is jammed. You quickly try to uh, you quickly try to clear it. Um, as you pull out the shell and you shove another one back in, the bear is already at the tree slams into it at which point you lose your balance and go tumbling off the tree down boom slamming onto the ground right next to the bear um so i'm gonna say uh <laughs> you i'm just gonna say you take one harm there armor piercing from the fall um so that's that's all you take from that point the bear doesn't have enough to like get on top of you now uh but you do have your chance to react this bear is about to be on top of you um, I regret everything. I would like to, um, infinite knife the bear. <laughs> it's right next okay. to me. I'm gonna I will say, knife you, you it. Get to choose, I, I did miss, uh, seized by force. Uh, you did get to choose one on, you do get, you do still exchange. Well, no, we're just gonna do it this way. I like this. So go to roll, uh, roll seized by force again. Okay. I'm gonna try to stab a bear. Please don't. Be terrible oh my god i rolled a five so technically even when you miss you still get to exchange harm so this bear is still taking shotgun damage um i can't believe you rolled two ones but <laughs> we'll deal with that in a second you do get to choose one from in uh inflict like terrible harm stuff like little harm take control of it or impress dismiss frighten your enemy i'm gonna inflict Terrible harm? Okay. Is that what you said? Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I... You get plus one harm to your shotgun. Oh, okay, so my shotgun is um, three. I have blood crazed, so it's plus one, so four, and then plus one, so five. It's five damage from your shotgun. Um, and it's a bear. Um, so you. You inflict terrible harm as you aim up straight into the kind of uh, the underjaw of the bear. It does like kind of claw down at you, raking its claws across you. Um, I'm going to say that the bear deals three harm, 
um, which you reduce to one because it's a bear. Uh, but you do have your body armor and you are a badass. So uh, what happens there, how this kind of gets resolved is you boosh, let that shot loose straight underneath the bear's kind of soft throat uh, as it rakes its claws across you. You feel the, the impact, the bruising, the blood. Uh, however, the bear now kind of and kind of lumbers down on top of you and you're just able to roll out of the way in time to keep its big form from crushing you. Let's go. Fuck! <laughs> uh, at which point you hear another kind of crashing noise coming through the woods. And you wheel around to see uh, what is, you're assuming, another bear approaching you, uh, drawn by your sounds of conflict and trying to avenge its brethren. Uh, however, as you wheel around towards it, you see a person running through the woods in your direction. Uh, she is dirty, hair matted, uh, scrapes and cuts and blood stains across the side of her face, uh, carrying what looks to be a rifle on her back. You see Jin. As she walks into the clearing, looks down at the bear, kind of out of breath, heaving. Tesla. And then she just poof, passes out right in front of you. And that's where we're gonna take a break. Uh, so uh, we will be right back in 10 minutes to uh, hopefully have everyone here and, uh, and resolve and see where this is going. Be right back everyone. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we have the full crew back with us. Surprise! A Lindsay appears. Um, Quick, so, uh, Pokeball. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's just jump back into it. So, uh, picking up a little bit after we left off, uh, Jin emerging through the woods, and Tesla, you uh, you see her pass out in front of you. And I think we'll sort of do the, the time jump there of everyone back at the train yard. Um, let's just, what I'm going to say, because I know a lot of people probably want to talk to a lot of people about a lot of things that have just happened. Um, but let's, immer let's, let's get back into this with Tesla coming back through the gates in an ATV probably or something along those lines with a with a wagon at the on the back of it. Dramatic uh, with, as fuck. With a big old bear, uh, with a big old hole in the back of its neck, uh, riding behind her and uh, sitting behind Tesla with her arms around your waist uh, is Jin. And we're just going to say that you guys all hear this engine roaring up. Uh, many of you have arrived recently. I think uh, Phoenix, you probably got back just a little while before. Leo, you probably might be back too, maybe beginning to fill Solomon in on some of the stuff that, that happened over at Fords and, and this sort of perfect moment comes into. Uh, so, scene, begin. How messed up do I look? <laughs> uh, pretty messed up. You, I'm like, you were, not good. You were attacked by a bear. Um, okay, you look great. like you got attacked by a bear. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Just think four inch long claws, probably longer. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, no, I fell out of a tree. And I think it, it, as, as you come roaring in, every kind of peeks out to see, because most of you, I assume, instinctually, when you hear engines approaching, probably look out towards the gate to see what's coming up. Um, you see Tesla uh, approaching you probably see how messed up she is uh Saul you might see that Jin is with her um the rest of you just notice Tesla's back I run over 
All right. Uh, like the upper comes... stayed kit or something. My angel kit? Yeah, that. I think Birdie comes stumbling out of her infirmary, grabbing some supplies and running straight up towards you. Uh, Tesla, as you put the ATV, you, you cut off the engine of the ATV as you pull into the garage. Are you all right? Um, I'm like, check for blood. Like while I'm talking, I'm just like, I don't, she's gonna be like, I'm fine. And I'll be like, I'll be the judge of that. There's a lot of blood. Great. <laughs> like I'm gonna start patching her like right there. Yeah, no, she's got, I think she. you have probably some big, big old claw marks um, across some exposed skin and some newly exposed skin from where the claws drag through the armor that you're wearing. Um, and some big old lacerations that uh, probably need some some big old stitches uh, or, or, or more. Tesla, I have told you how to compress these. You didn't have to drive all the way with them, gaping open. I mean, honestly, it's just such a mess. I'm like cleaning it up and just berating kindly. Glad you're back, though. Dinner. Jin, who's sitting right behind you, kind of go, wait. <laughs> oh, the What's bear. Next? So, so, so Tesla only has one harm, right? Uh, I'm at six on the clock. I have two. two. Two harm. Is that a thing that I heal or do I have to freak out about three? I don't remember how my um, class works. <laughs> uh, we will, we will remember together. Uh, the two harm heals. Do, do, do. I wrote it down somewhere, I think in my notes. Yeah. Um, I can speed the recovery of someone at three or six, but they will yeah. eventually heal on their own if I don't. Whereas yeah. nine, I have to help them. So at the at the, I mean, with the minimal amount of of patching up you can do, you can. She's she's fine. She's stable. It's going to heal on its own. But yeah, you could you could definitely spend some stock and help her recover a bit faster. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it later. Okay. Uh, so Just, realize this might Jin. not be the best place. <laughs> yeah. Jin, where have you been? Are you all right? Um, how are you feeling? Uh, Jin's a little worse off. Uh, Jin is an NPC, so her injuries are a bit differently. Um, but she's 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 stable. Uh, but she's also, I mean, she's very sorry, my chair. Uh, <laughs> it's very rough at this point. Um, and as she looks exhausted, she looks malnourished, she looks dehydrated, uh, and, uh, she looks beaten and bruised and bloody right now, uh, like she has been through the ringer. Okay, I will tend to the open wounds while Tesla and she report in, carry the beard, whatever, like, I'll just be in the background, like, wrapping things, whatever I can do, but otherwise I know she's probably gonna spend some time with me for, like, IVs for fluids and things. Mm -hmm. but that's what I'm doing in the background while the rest... And everybody else takes care of their things. Okay, so maybe this moves a little bit towards your infirmary, where you kind of huddle, kind of shepherd her in there. Uh, Saul, you, is you're watching this probably from up in your perch in your office, and are you beginning to come down, or what are you, what are you doing? I don't think it's Saul. Sorry, I didn't realize that was directed to me. Oh yeah, uh, I was asking, uh, are you still in your office? Are you coming down, or what are you? Um for uh yeah i think yeah i'll come down yeah okay. yeah um who else wants to get in on this scene who else has come like been drawn to to all of this because this is probably the best opportunity for you guys to kind of get out some of the stuff that's happened over the past few days um if phoenix and leo want to jump in on this too yeah i'm gonna say with soul getting involved this is probably the first chance i've had to talk to him since i've been back Mm -hmm. I had to make sure no one touched my baby, okay? That that was the most important thing. That sounds right. <laughs> and I think Leopold will he'll be up in the rafters, or maybe not all the way up in the rafters, but perched up above people, but visibly, like letting his presence be known, but not directly in conversation at the moment. Okay, so I think what happens is you all kind of, you, you, Bertie, you, you usher... Um, uh, Jin inside Tesla coming in quickly after to keep your eyes on Birdie. Um, the infirmary is pretty empty at this point. Uh, most people have been treat, 
treat and released. Uh, and I, I'd say the only person who's in there right now is uh, Ned, um, Ollie's son, who is still, uh, I'd say, sedated and uh, in a in a bed, uh, quarantined off in the corner. Uh, and otherwise, it's it's just you. So you you usher the three of you come in. Uh, Saul, you you come kind of I guess, swaggering in uh, after, uh, and then Phoenix, you also take this opportunity to kind of duck in the door as well and join in on this conversation. Uh, meanwhile, Leo is creeping in the rafters, um, and then Garrett, I think you are doing something with your gang right now, and you're beating the head that direction, leaving this to its own thing. Okay, continue. I have nothing to say. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just patching people up while other people do things. Well, I didn't expect this is where the party would be. There's always so much fun happening in the infirmary. Get Wait, down from there. There is a floor. <laughs> uh, I suppose, and I'll just sort of swing down mildly acrobatically. <laughs> Pretty like kind of anime, but like, how long has he been there? Look, I told you before, like, sitting up there like that, people find it weird. Yes, but, you know, people don't look up. I can listen in, and so many interesting conversations happen in this room. I guess I can't argue with that logic. I think it's funny. It's like I... there's a bird in Birdie's infirmary. <laughs> also, I think I have a broken rib. Yeah. I'm like, I'm wrapping it and I like kind of wrap it just once a little bit tighter than necessary, which she's like, I think it's funny. And I'm like, <laughs> just squeeze it a little bit. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Tesla, you doing all right? Fine. So the bear you bought in. Yeah. For real? You ain't never seen a bear before? Only just passing through the woods. I tend to avoid them because, you know, I like my guts where they are. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know what, Saul? While I've got you here, I was going to wait till I could find you in your office, but long my met a fellow down there named Elijah. Elijah. One of the dogs. I don't know what to say. Vickers. Talkers. One of his eyes, ears, and mouths amongst this island. I've been told to say something to anyone it concerns and... I was paid for the job, and you know I do what I'm paid to do. Black Dog says in four weeks' time, anyone can go to his church and beg for forgiveness and be birth rebirthed in the baptismal waters, as, including you, Saul, aside from, well, Tesla, Garrett, and Birdie, who he says, not me, this is him, can burn in the deepest pits of hell. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was paid to deliver a message, and I, t I keep my word in that kind of thing. If you don't want this getting out, say so now, and hey, you know my deal with you. If you keep paying me for work, I'll do it. Miss Elijah, say anything else? Anyone else with him? Just him. He's made good friends with Twist in the bar down there. Explains how relations with Longmire and Ollie happened. Hmm. Elijah's also the one who reached out to Ford. And that relationship may be growing stronger as, well, things did not go super well. 
I do not believe Ford will be supplying us for the foreseeable future until we bring him the heads of Black Dog's men and show that we can protect him better than Black Dog can. If I remember correctly, I also heard that name from Kit. Elijah? I would like to insight check Leopold. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you can read a person. Um, let's see. That's going to be a sharp roll. Because I ain't never trusted that boy, and I don't think it's as simple as him just being like, we just need to protect him better. I want to make sure nothing bad happened to Ford. I rolled a nine. Okay. Um... So you get to ask one question from the read a person move. Yes, yes, yes. Let me get that up here. Uh, for the for the audience, I'll read. It says uh, you can either uh, ask, "Is your character telling the truth? What's your character really feeling? How does your character? What does your character intend to do? What does your character wish I'd do? Or how can I get your character to do blank?" Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Well, I guess the most straightforward one is Is your character telling the truth? Which. Which. Go ahead. I mean, technically. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much I should be elaborating. Is this. Like, is, like do I get a feeling of some obfuscation? Like, it's true, but, like. Yeah, I, there's I, more say- truth. I'd say you probably get the idea that this is it might be a little bit of a live omission a bit. Uh, there might be a little bit more to the story. Mm, cool. Okay, that's all. Now, do I or Tesla or Garrett recognize... Well, Garrett's not there, is he? Are you? No. So do a Tesla or I recognize the name Elijah? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, from previously. From pre-Solomon's gang. Uh, I'd say, yeah, you do know Elijah was one of Black Dog's lieutenants, one of his, uh, is sort of one of his right-hand uh, folks. Um, and was sort of an, I mean, was, was sort of an enforcer, uh, kept people in line, um, and was a, a big presence around the compound. So I probably didn't have any like personal experience with him. Uh, you. But I might have personal experience with people who were visited by him. You might have had some personal experience with him. Uh, you might have had some conversations. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think. I think Elijah is probably somebody that you might have had conversation with if you needed anything. Might have corresponded with you instead of Black Dog directly. Mm-hmm. Um, Black Eye was sort of antisocial a bit, didn't really talk to as many people. Um, but uh, as far as your interactions with them, uh, when I say enforcer, isn't really the most like a aggra- isn't like Tesla or okay. or I will edit my somebody. notes. <laughs> yeah, um, but is it isn't like a big, strong sort of bruiser type? More like get people to do what they want by leveraging the right information. A little more kind of manipulative than than anything else. Through the thinker. Ah. Cool. I'm still just patching people up. Once I'm satisfied with Tesla and Jin, I will also check on Solomon. Yeah. Which, I'm by just the way, a bird flitting around <laughs> fixing people. Um, Jin is in the room too, and she after you're patching her up, and she's kind of sheepishly trying to avoid eye contact with you, Solomon. Um. A little Rage bit. Sitch. Or Pearson. Not Sitch. She's, uh, not, a, she's not a Sitch. She's a person. She, you want to read a person? Yeah. Uh, yeah, go for well, it. Well, I, I can... Well, yeah, I can roll before I start talking to her, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you roll. All right. I rolled, and it is... Uh, nine. Okay. What do you want now? Um... Can I hold it and then talk to her and then ask one or then ask yeah. you one of these? I say you can use it during this conversation at some point. Okay. All right. Um, Janice, real good to see you. Uh, 
she's sort of surprising. You know, the surprise bit looks up at you and says, uh, Hey, boss. We're glad I made it back. You're welcome. Where have you been? Thanks, Jess. Uh, back in. I, I came back as quick as I could. It is. Uh, where's Raven? Well, Raven didn't make it. Oh, shit. I promised that kid I'd get him back all right. Damn it. Well, that kid didn't die in the back end. You had nothing to do with that. What we happened, got, Jim? We got ambushed as soon as we got across. I, I think we were about a mile uh, after we made it, landed our gliders in the forest, uh, just near the southern edge of the island, uh, I think we made it about ten miles out of the compound, if that. And they were on us. It's like they knew they were coming. I, I, I don't know. Somebody must have tipped them off. How could word get to them so fast? I don't know. But we made it there and they ambushed us. We got away, held up in some shacks just at the edge of the the forest. I told Raven that that we get out of this. He had gotten beaten to hell. We got separated and I got back to the gliders. His was gone. Hmm. I assume he had made it back. How did you get back? You found your glider. You had your glider. Same way I got there. It took me some mm-hmm. time because the winds cast me a bit further south than I would have liked, and I had to hoof it all the way back here. Do you know where the, you know where they're holed up now? You got any idea? Black Dogs Camp? That's right. I assume same place they've been, at the church. Like I said, we didn't get within visual of it. I, I haven't seen it, not since the attack months ago. I don't know if they've rebuilt, but I did see some things when we were hiding out in the in the hills uh, near the edge of the forest in those shithole of a ruin. We heard a lot of cars going by. There was an envoy heading south. More more cars than I'd ever than I remember Black Dogs Gang having, especially when we attacked them. They were moving stuff through the woods. I don't know what or why, but... What direction were they headed? Uh, They went south during the night, and then the next morning they came back north. South of every convoy. South of the Backdoss compound? Yeah, on Vacan. I haven't seen had nor heard of them since I made it back here to Dakota. Well, you done good making it back here alive. Not good enough if Raven didn't make it. Couldn't be helped. Don't worry yourself about that. Uh, Can I use my hold and what does Jen wish I'd do? Um... I think this is a bit layered because I think I think you already did a little bit of it. Uh, I think she wanted a little bit of reinsurance that she did the right thing. Um, but more than that, sort of in this moment, uh, I, I think she she wants an order. She wants to know what to do next. 
um, she she wants to know that you're going to get justice for this, I think is what you're, you're yeah. reading from her. Well, I think one thing that serves a lot of interest right now is dead dogs. We need to get them. If you know where they are, it's time for us to go on the offensive. Uh, she nods sort of enthusiastically and looks up at you. Um, and she says, damn right. Um, and she looks around at everybody else in the room and she says, I- I'll leave you to your business if you want me to. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Jen, you're staying here with me. You've you've had a bit of a rough time and I'm going to make it a bit better for you. <laughs> uh, she she kind of looks up at you, uh, a bit scared. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but the image I'm getting here is that she's a bit intimidated. Why? Like, so nice. I don't know. You're, you're just a bit <laughs> scary. And I think that's how she's reading from that. And you, she kind of sits back down and says, uh, all right, Bertie. I'm gonna bring her like a pillow and like a blanket, like a little bit of water. All right. I'm momming. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Um, okay, so she kind of relaxes a bit, unless you have any other com- questions for her or anything, but um, what do you guys do? <sighs> Is Garrett around? Is he in town? You're still out and about? He- Garrett's come back, but he's not, he and his gang are not around or in the immediate vicinity. Okay. I've seen him. He's probably down drinking somewhere. Um, I think my only objective for the, like the, the, the moment is, uh, Paul Leopold aside. I don't know how that's possible when he's in the Raptors. No, I, I hopped down. Okay. Um, I just want to just surreptitiously, surreptitiously speak with April and to say we may still have a mole problem here, and that may include people in this room. So we'd like you to go hunting can't leave any stones unturned if we're gonna make a move on black dogs they can't know we're on the way we've got to fix a small problem before we make a move of course we'll get right on it thank you and uh i also after this like there's lots of scenes that can happen between this next thing so i'll just like throw it out there uh is uh, I, w- I, w- I want to uh, uh, get weird <laughs> and, and uh, try to uh, find out. Well, there's a lot of things like I got, I think I got like super shook up from the last experience and it kind of brought up a lot of things. And, um, but yeah, I think I'm going to risk doing that later on. Um, okay. But that can be like, there's a lot of things that can happen in between that. Yeah. And, and so I'll sit back. No, I, I I definitely want to do that. Is it, let let me ask this then, if uh, it, since Ryan's stepping back with that, is there anything anybody wants to do before that? Nothing that I need everybody for. I'm just gonna patch up Tesla. I'm gonna patch up Jim. Okay. I was paid to pass on a message, so I'm gonna do what I can to do that. Part of that does involve going to the bar because I know bartenders talk. And I know okay. that's probably where Garrett is right now. So if he wants to have a thing happen. Okay. So you go to the bar um, to tell 
uh, to sort of pass on the message that kind of spread spread some rumors. That I assume you're trying to do this in a way where it's not going to get tracked back to you. Um, uh, I'm spreading rumors. Like Solomon already knows I've been told to pass this on. And I said, if you want to stop me, and he didn't. So I'm passing <laughs> it on. Sorry. I, 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 yeah, I did not realize that you were going to pass it on to everybody. I thought it was just for me. <laughs> I would have had a very different reaction, so this is really fun. Uh, yeah, I think Solomon might have been a bit distracted at that moment, and uh, a lot of stuff going on, and this might have fallen through the gaps a bit. Uh, but I love it. So Phoenix kind of shrugs, goes to the bar. Um, Garrett is not there. Uh, you go top of the line, end of the line, uh, is not currently uh, at any of the local haunts. Um, so uh, if you you have the opportunity to spread the rumors and kind of uh, uh, get that going a bit. I'm trying to think if there's a there's a role that I want you to make for how well these rumors spread, but I think I'm stretching it a bit. I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to say roll plus hot. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, where's my sheet? I have too many tabs open right now. Uh, that's a nine. Oh, that's, I oh hey, look, I get an improvement as well. Ha ha! Forgot to go back to the train yard. Uh, yeah, so... Alright, so yeah, you, uh, with a nine, I'm gonna say you start spreading those rumors, uh, kind of getting some, uh, getting that out there. Uh, I'll uh, hit the hot social spots in town, it may get out. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's definitely going to sort of make the rounds. Um, I'm going to say that we don't have to deal with this now. We'll probably, I would say we'll probably wait till it feels like enough time has passed for it. But Solomon, this definitely gets back to you that this got out there. Um, so we can deal with that uh, when, when the time comes for that. But I don't think that happens right away. Um, Garrett, is there anything you want to do with what you're doing right now? Or do you just want to... I mean, it's probably going to take a little bit of time, so... Um, and I mean, like, in-game and, like, me describing it. So if anyone wants to do anything else, that's cool. Because I'm, I'm going to do the whole, what we talked about, of bringing the people in, so... Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I, I, I don't think there's anything else. I mean, we haven't got a lot of Garrett, so I'm okay with moving doing this scene before we move back to Solomon. So, um, yeah, let's do Garrett's thing. So you... Describe where you take them. All right. Um, so Garrett gets back after he does all of his stuff. Um, everyone is kind of good, and you know the the pack is back together. Um, and he brings together um, Crush and who was the other one that I can't remember? Pet. Pet. Um, and tells them to to bring everyone together, bring the four or five newbies, and to bag them and bring them to the den. Okay. So you get your, uh, they, they round up the, the new recruits. Um, you head off just out. I'd say this isn't probably too far away from town. You found a nice kind of little, uh, cave or, or kind of fissure kind of cavern built kind of just outside the train yard um enough space for you to do your thing um and and they make their way uh down there draw uh bringing these sort of slightly panicking uh new recruits into this small kind of cave that you guys have kind of claimed as your little sanctuary um it's dimly lit with uh the you know, kind of some oil lanterns and, and kind of candles kind of scattered around. Uh, just enough light so you, for your crew to kind of line the walls there. Um, and they push all four of the new recruits into the center. Uh, and uh, they're kind of, they're, they got the bags over their heads and they're kind of stumbling around a bit, um, wondering what's going on. Cool. Um, he pushes past them, and as he does, uh, the room itself, like you said, is probably just like 30 feet. It's enough to bring the entire gang in. What 
everyone, like if we're doing this cinematically, what you will notice is that as soon as the gang walks through, um, I'm going to guess they have like made a gate. So if someone does find it, it's harder to get into it. Um, as soon as they pass the gate, they start to like sort of disrobe. It's nothing like horrible, but like they take off their um, their cuts. So the, the vest that they have with all of their stuff on it. Um, and they all remove their shirts and they put the cuts back on. As they're walking, um, if again, cinematically, if you move the camera, you'll notice that every single one of them has a, I guess like tattoo slash scarification on their back, every single one of them. Um, that is of a different scene. Um, Crush has a, like a giant hand holding what is essentially the planet and it's starting to crush it and crack it apart. Um, Widow, who is basically uh, his second in command, has a huge spider web on her back with a almost demonic looking black widow. Um, Garrett's is the only one that is a little bit differently where everyone else is a mix of tattoo and scarification. His is pure scarification and it takes up his entire back and it is of course of a demonic looking figure in this massive iron plate armor uh, covered in fire and shadow. As he walks into the room or the cave itself, you see at the back end is, what is, I guess you could say like an altar. Um, it's very small. It's small enough that you could put it in a saddlebag and it is just of the icon or the patch that they all have, which is a wolf's head um, in front of a full moon and it's got a arrow uh, in its jaws and it's cracking it in half. And in front of that is seven shotguns, spent shotgun cells. And he walks up to that altar, pulls the four that he had previously when he opened his mind or whatever, and he puts them um, onto each as his crew is basically lining the walls and putting them in the middle. And he just stands there for a little, little time. Okay. Um, I can go on if you want. No, I mean, I think you, you stand there for a bit and the whole room's kind of, I mean, it's quiet. You still have the, the hooded figures in the center kind of, uh, there were some muffled, like, I guess kind of noises of panic a bit, uh, but otherwise nobody's really saying anything. I think they maybe have an idea of what's going on. Um, they're not like fully panicking, yelling for help, anything like that. But uh, yeah, everybody's very quiet, uh, kind of lining the walls of the room. Um, he actually looks over to Crush, Pep, and Widow, and come here. They approach. Um, as he puts them, the the rest of them onto the altar, he kind of looks at him and is just like. How long has it been since we lost this many people? Um, Crush doesn't say anything. Uh, but Pet nods and says, Not long enough. I agree. With what we just did a few days ago, I think they're ready. What you guys think? Um, Pep sort of shrugs. Um, Widow says, "That is it gonna be." Crush. Just nods. <laughs> I love him so much. Well, it's time to get our numbers back to where they were. Take the hoods off. They go over and they rip the hoods off, and you see the. Uh, Three or the four men and women uh, kind of shaking their heads and looking around confused. Uh, a little bit more scared now that it looks a little more ritualistic. And uh, yeah, th I think there they're probably is a bit of panic. Uh, and they all look forward to you. He's still like not facing them at this point. He's still looking at the altar. Um, you're here for a reason. You did something in a short amount of time that usually doesn't happen 
but our numbers the way they are makes things a little bit faster. So you have one more thing you need to do before you can be a part of this group. So, and he kind of reaches under and he takes this, I guess you could call it a dagger, maybe an athame, whatever you want to say. And he looks towards them, all of them. And he goes, now tell me, what is your name? Uh, one of them kind of uh, one of the, the one of the uh, two women uh, with the group, kind of a a little bit older looking, uh, middle aged but looks tough, kind of hardened a bit, and uh, she says, uh, "None." Do I get the sense that that's her actual name? That's her actual name. Yeah, yeah. and he laughs <sighs> every time. You think that being a part of this for, again, the short amount of time you you get it. But I'll ask again, what is your name? Four of them just look at each other. Don't say anything because they don't know the right answer now. Um, he points to Widow. What's your name? Uh... Well, I guess I ask you, what does Widow say? She would say Widow. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, she she looks at them and she says, Widow. Points to Crush. I know you're probably not gonna say it, but. Uh... He he reaches down, mm -hmm. uh, picks up a a rock off the ground and just crushes it in his bare hands. So, my name's the Iron Demon. Everyone in this room has a name that they chose. They weren't given it. It wasn't thrust upon them. They took it and they made it their own. And he points to Nan, the one that talked. Right. You, what's your name now? Uh, she kind of looks at you, uh, has like the slight flash of a grin, but then stops because, you know, she's trying to be more serious and realizes how intense this moment is. And she says, Rust. Rust it is. Um, and he goes down all the other ones and he points, like, What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Mm -hmm. Um, and after they all give their name, <sighs> this part's going to hurt. But I'm not going to do it to you if you don't want to be a part of this family. If you don't want to be a part of something bigger. This information comes with a price and it comes with a cost. You could back out right now and that's perfectly understandable. You won't ever be a part of this group. But I understand why you would shirk away from it. What do you say? Roll plus hard. Ooh, that's a good one. And... How did I get a 15 on that? I don't know how you got a 15. Oh, shit. That's two plus, that's plus two plus two. Oh, that's why. Okay, so take that two away. Okay, so it's just down yeah. and try. It's like, yeah. damn, boy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Cool. Uh, still, that's, I mean, on its own, that's still a 13, which mm -hmm. is pretty gosh dang ridiculous. Uh, and he, uh, all four of them, um, kind of steady after listening to his words and seeing everyone around and seeing all these people here that have been in the same position and they've been through it and they're a part of this and they want to be a part of it. And all four of them stay. Well, it's going to be a long night, boys and girls. Let's get to it. And he walks over to Nan, um, 
he points to Crush because Crush is probably the biggest in the the group, and he kind of walks over and holds her still. Um, and Garrett pulls the knife and starts the process, which we will fade to black on. Yeah, that that seems good. Uh, but it is, I, I think, each one of them. I mean, it, it's obviously a painful process, but it, with the the comfort of the people around them in the room that have been through this and this sort of bonding here uh, and the fact that they are all going through it willingly and of their own consent, uh, I think it is a powerful sort of emotional experience uh, throughout the night. Um, and not one of them backs down from it, even the last one that final that, that goes through after seeing the other three, um, they all stay. Um, so, that takes up most of the evening, but I, I like the idea of picking up here then with uh, with Solomon. Unless somebody else wanted to do anything, again, I want to give everybody their chance to do something here. Um, I mean, I think maybe. it would be after Solomon's thing, but at some point, Leo is going to start hunting for the mole. Okay, yeah. Um, so let's we'll do uh, we'll do Solomon's then, and then I've got one thing, uh, other thing I want to do. So uh, Solomon. I like the idea. You can decide how you want to do this and how you kind of how you tap into the to this maelstrom. I like the idea that probably happens like right before morning, like as late in the night as possible. Maybe not got any sleep, but that is up to you. Yeah, I think it probably in my office uh, with some uh, libation, trying to. Uh, I think. Probably conflicted. I think trying to psych himself up for it, but also like wanting, like, you know, like he's conflicted. Definitely wants to both psych himself up for it and also like not do it. Um, but uh, especially given his history. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of like the scene leading up to it. Uh, I'm not really sure like how he starts it. Uh, I think maybe just like, um, maybe a, uh, just being exhausted mentally and, and physically at, you know, maybe five in the morning after staying up all night. I guess he just uh, relents and opens up to this horrible awfulness. Okay. Um, go ahead and uh, roll weird. All right. Minus two. It's a six. So close. I would, that's a lot closer than I thought I'd get. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's probably about as close to success as, uh, as, as Saul's probably ever gotten. Um, yeah. awesome. What's Saul thinking about? Oh gosh, um, thinking about uh, everybody in in uh, the train yard is thinking about uh, Black Dog's thinking about his family is thinking about um, yeah he's just he's thinking about everything where it, it always feels like it's 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 about to slip out of his grasp at, at any moment but you know um, even with the, uh, even with the extra manpower, uh, or got, actually specifically firepower that he found today, he's still super insecure about that. So all those things, little. Bit. Okay. So after probably downing a few glasses, if not the whole bottle of one of the the two or three bottles you have of that that uh, the scotch that that you found. Um, you finally surrender yourself to this this force that you experienced the day before and you i think in that moment you start thinking about about your daughter about about emily and that that memory sort of hits you and what do you think your happiest moment was with with Emily? Mm. 
I think. See, uh, seeing her uh, baking with her mother. Um, it was just, it was, it, uh, I think they have never been able, I think probably at that point they'd never had any way to actually cook or bake anything. Like they'd be kind of like scrounging for a while, but they, maybe they come across a, uh, a kiln or an oven or something and, and, uh, the ingredients to actually make something, uh, reminiscent of a past that's, that's so distant. Um, and it, it uh. And maybe it was just like something like just a, a loaf. It might have just been some bread, but it was like uh, it stood out for him because it mainly because of how excited Emily was uh, because this was a food she'd never seen before. Um, and probably the last time he remembers seeing uh, his wife happy either. It's just like a just like one of the few moments where like everyone in the family was happy. So I think you you sort of maybe fall asleep, maybe dream, maybe a vision. You're not quite sure, but you you see this moment and you find yourself standing in this small kind of dirty, rusted space, the remnants of maybe a house that you found with an old kind of. Uh, brick oven uh and you are able to you know kind of make do kind of following along with an instinct that most people never get the chance to find having your family there having a wife and daughter and you see emily laughing um uh, probably only four or five years old at this point um, as she's mixing the ingredients together and making a mess everywhere, and there's flour and, and water, kind of, uh, kind of cake, uh, this, this dirty counter, um, and uh, Jane looks up at you and kind of smiles as uh, she she makes eye contact with you, and the two of you are kind of laughing over this, and you begin to hear something quiet at first and it begins to grow faster and louder and you hear what sounds like hooves like a horse approaching quickly and you turn around and look around the kitchen and there's nothing there and you walk to the window and you don't see anything outside and you turn back to Jane, Emily, and they've stopped moving. And you watch as the whole scene around you sort of fades to almost a gray, brownish color. And there's a gust of wind and everything blows away like sand. Just everything dissolving in front of you. And you turn around hearing those hooves growing louder and louder and you see behind you bearing down and rearing up giving out a horrific whinnying noise this crimson horse dripping with with gore and blood with entrails strewn across it, eyes like coals uh, as it rears back and lets out this horrific screech. Uh, and you stumble backwards and fall to the ground and you peer around, you can see more shapes approaching in the distance and you hear the hoofbeats of, of more horses, of, of more people approaching and you begin to panic as this whinnying and this cry grows louder and louder and you try to back away from it, but the creature keeps bearing down on you. As this is happening, Tesla, you hear a ringing in your ear. Shit. Um, 
and you turn and you kind of like the Doppler effect, you kind of catch it and you look up and it, it feels, it sounds like there's a very high, very shrill ringing coming from the direction of, of uh, the, the garage of, of where Solomon's office is, um, wherever you might be on patrol or whatever you might be doing at this point. Um, and as, as that's happening, um, well, what do you do? Um, I assume something weird is happening, and I get up and try to follow it. Okay. Um, at that same time, while while that's happening, uh, Birdie, you feel pain in your chest. I'm assuming I was tending either her or Jin at this time. I think so you're in the infirmary. Closet. Yeah, I think you're in the infirmary right now. You guys can be together right now if you think that you guys are both in the infirmary. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was hurt. Yeah. And so I'll just kind of put a hand on one of the cots and, like, the other hand, like, kind of against my sternum and just, like... <sighs> I'm just kind of trying to breathe through it. And if it doesn't go away, I guess I'll then act doesn't seem to go away. Is it like, hmm. So it's just like a, it's like a clenchy kind of a pain or? Yeah. I'm doctoring this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it, it feels, you're, I mean, you're just getting this kind of dull kind of throbbing pain in your chest and your heart is beating faster. Your like adrenaline pumping through your system, mm -hmm. like. Okay, so I kind of start breathing, breathing faster. Then I'm just like kind of staring off in space. I kind of like just blindly reach over to like grab onto Tesla's like shoulder or arm or something, like something to like just grab onto. And that's what I do as I try. I'm just, I'm just like, T Tesla. I'm just kind of freaking out a little bit. What? What's wrong? Uh, there's something wrong with my heart. And I guess I got, I'd also try and like stretch or like move and see if like moving in any way makes it feel any better or worse. About the same. Uh, Tesla, that ringing is still going on. It feels like it's coming from outside. I don't know what to do. I know we need her. <laughs> So like Birdie's basically just trying to like stay calm, like kind of gripping Tesla on the hand or the arm or whatever it is that she grabbed onto. And it's just like trying to labor breathe, basically. <laughs> Everything's going wrong at once. Are like Hecuba what? or Deet nearby? Probably. Probably. I I'll say I'll say Deet is in there with you right oh. now, helping tend to Jin. I, well, okay, I'll I'll grab them. I guess something is wrong. <laughs> yeah. I'm like deep, uh, and I'll just like grab grab their like hands and like kind of make him like feel my pulse. Uh, they feel your pulse. Uh, Bertie, are you all right? Do you need to sit down? Yeah, I sit down. <laughs> um. You sit down so I'll, there. I'll reluctantly like let go of my lifeline over here and just like go sit down and just like staring at Tesla from like across the room, I guess in the only chair or one of the chairs in okay. here. Okay. So you sit down in there. Um, it, Tesla, that ring's growing louder. I just look at D and I think you watch her. Oh, of course, of course. You go, go, go. And you scream what? if something happens, and I take off Tesla? towards wherever it's coming from. Um, you you walk outside, and as soon as you guys you hear that ringing, and you, you turn your head, and you realize it's it's coming from upstairs. It's coming from Solomon's office, and you also almost bump into Leo as Leo is walking right past you, um, with sort of a glazed look in his eye. Uh, and you realize you almost run into him. He's sleepwalking. 
Why is everybody being weird on the same day? Leo, <laughs> shake him real quick. <laughs> All right, uh, you you try to wake up the sleepwalking Leo. Uh, I feel uh, like this has happened before. Yeah, Leo, you you are suddenly jolted out of a deep sleep, um, and and sort of panic and fear and and all these emotions are just rushing through your system, and and uh, Tesla is right in front of you. Tesla Tacoma, what is happening? Something is weird. I need you to come with me. I just I take him with me. He knows about weird stuff. Okay. Um, you both did you go up towards Solomon's office? Yeah. All right. You both uh, rush your way up towards Solomon's office, and that rings more louder and louder and louder as you make your way up those steps, and you get to the door, which is I'm, I assume probably locked um, uh, at this point. But you can uh, through kind of the frosted windows on on the on the glass. I assume it's kind of hard. You can't really see inside. It's dark in there, um, and you can vaguely make out the shape of Solomon sitting at his desk. Okay, I bang on the door to see if he answers. He does not. Great. Can I go aggro on a door? You're Tesla. You can knock. You can break this door down. Uh, <laughs> I kick. I probably uh, kick it. I don't think okay. I want to shoulder it down. You brace yourself against the uh, the railing, rear up with both feet, and you kick inwards right at the right at the handle, breaking the door open. Um, and as you do, that sound is deafening. You actually collapse onto one knee as that ringing is coming from inside. Um, and you both see Solomon sitting in his chair, a uh, bottle of, of uh, a mostly empty bottle of uh, some alcohol sitting on the on the uh, desk of uh, glass in front of him. Uh, and he's sitting in his chair, hands gripped on the side of the um, on the armrests uh, with this look of frozen terror across his face. Okay. Um, if I see Tesla on the ground, I'm going to move over. Um, oh, which of my moves are... Well, first, I will attempt to just kind of shake Solomon or bring him back to consciousness without doing anything too weird yet. Okay. I'm going to say, yeah, you, you try to shake him awake. You try to wake him up, and he's just not responding. He is, he is like a statue there you cannot move him um like every muscle in his body is tense you see the wound at the side probably bleeding through a little bit through his shirt um he is sweating profusely uh and and just has this thousand yard stare of just terror on his face yeah oh I'm looking up my moves, and I don't know. Um, 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 um. I think my instinct actually is rather than doing any of the specific moves, it's to try to tap into whatever he's doing sure. with opening his mind and try to, you know, the the way that that trope of you have to go in and rescue someone from the simulation. Love it, love it. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Go to roll weird. Cool. This is why I brought you. <laughs> Uh, that is a 13. Ooh, buddy. All right. Hmm. If you're going to offer a temptation, I'm going to say no, just because yeah. everyone on the, on, in the camp is freaked <laughs> out about this right yeah, now. Yeah, I was going to, and I was like, nah, nah, not in this moment. Uh, that was good. Uh, <laughs> um, you, you, you touch the side of his head, and you feel that resonance, you feel that, that energy that you're tapped into kind of surging around him. You, you hear that ringing, you, you, you feel that connection that, that now Tesla and then Birdie are, are both feeling right now. Uh, and you, you realize what's going on. And as you close your eyes, you see what, what you see Solomon, um, you see him in that same frozen expression. You see him, in, in terror, backing away, clawing at sand as he's trying to push himself across an endless, like, uh, uh, gray desert stretching out in, in every direction with blackened clouds roiling up ahead. Uh, you see this crimson horse leering over him, uh, just 
chomping at the air um, and uh, just this gore kind of spattering onto the ground and you see Solomon in, in this panic trying to get away from this creature. Um, I'll go for just interpose myself between Solomon and the horse and say to, is there a rider on the horse or just a horse? Just the horse. Um... Oh, uh, hold on. I'm looking back at notes from last time to see if I can make this more thematically appropriate. But um, I'll just interpose myself in between them and say, Get thee gone, beast of burden. You have no power here. All right. Um, I think with that role, you sort of, whatever hallucination, vision, whatever it might be that you're tapping into, you're able to stop it and and the horse kind of <clears throat> uh backs up a bit kind of trying to to move towards you and but continue back with some sort of fear or just mm-hmm. boundary that you were setting up by interposing yourself and solomon in that moment in this vision uh you suddenly see leopold in front of you um and i don't think there's any like exchange there uh in this in this dream space whatever's going on but i think that's enough to break you out of it before you before it snaps, before it breaks, you see those roiling clouds in the distance, that darkness in the distance, you see uh, you see three other horses approaching. You don't see any more detail, but you see them approaching. And you both snap out of it at that point. Solomon, you're aching, you feel this horrible pain in your side. Uh, is it thematically appropriate for me to retake that harm that I got rid of the, earlier this session? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I think that's that is appropriate. Okay. Does the ringing stop? The ringing has stopped at this point, and that pain in your chest, Birdie, um, is is stopped. <sighs> Solomon, father, are you? <clears throat> I know you're not well, but shall I fetch Birdie? Not right now. Once I hear him speak, but I know he's alive (laughs) and here, I get up off the ground and having completely lost my mind, I don't think I've ever, like, touched Solomon before. I will push Leopold out of the way if I have to. I grab him by the shoulders and I shake him and I say, What did you do? Uh, wow, yeah, uh, I'm sufficiently rattled. Uh, um, there's a knife in Leopold's hand. Right I'm now. Try- He's not doing anything with it yet. There's now a knife in his hand. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, yeah, you're Tesla and you're shaking an old man. I think he, he's, he's real shaken up and real bad. And I don't think he can, knows how to respond to you. I, he doesn't. I, yeah. I don't think he, he can respond to you. I think he's, even though he was just speaking, I think he lost the ability <laughs> again after you started shaking him. Uh, he's just uh, probably going to like, look, uh, look worriedly at you and, and around the room and, and, and see. yeah. Tesla Tacoma, I do not believe he is currently in a frame of mind to be answering questions. He was just in a nightmarish hellscape. Tesla. You hear something else now. Yes. We We hear it. We all hear it. We do. (laughs) There's the sound of a buzzing outside. Probably not a, fami- a totally familiar sound to you, Tesla. Slowly growing louder. I let go of him. We are so fucked. <laughs> Do you all rush out? Do I hear it? Um, I'm probably in the doorway of the infirmary. You all hear it. Those I'd you... go and check it out. Okay. I'm gonna look out the window. 
Garrett, from your cave as you're finishing up with the last new recruit, uh, you're, you all begin to hear this noise outside. You all emerge from the cavern and make your way up uh, just outside the gates uh, or the, the, the northern walls of the uh, compound um, of the train yard. The rest of you making your way out of the gates and looking up, hearing this noise. And you all look to the south, southeast from where you are, east, southeast. And you see approaching in the distance a small dot in the sky, growing larger and larger, as something is flying through the air in your direction. You see a small uh, propeller plane just skating across the treetops, making its way and beginning the pass over, getting closer and closer, larger and larger, you see a crimson red plane as it just begins to cusp the edge of your compound and begin to pass overhead. Is there any, how do we access do we actually have an intercom system, or do we just have horns or something? Um, I think there's like a siren system, uh, but not okay. necessarily like intercom. If there's some kind of you know shelter in place alert, as soon as Leopold's able to ascertain that it's red, he's going to rush and try and sound that alarm. Okay, I think you sound that alarm, and everybody in the compound begins to wake and scatter. And there's this like. <laughs> as everyone begins to rush outside and begin to scatter and, and, and see like in panic what's going on. I don't think you guys have had many like attacking That's the opposite planes. of what I wanted to have happen. Uh, I well, want them to stay inside. I think that's what happens <laughs> yeah. in this moment because how often you guys do fire drills here? Yeah. Not that often. Uh, we'll, uh, but, but everybody begins to rush out and as they crowd, the, pain, uh, the plane with a roaring sound comes passing straight overhead and keeps going. And as it passes overhead, as the sun is beginning to rise in the distance, you notice something. Is there something Solomon wanted to do? Okay. Uh, no, I, I think I'm just out of it. I was just whistling like... Oh, okay. Nothing drops. But as the paint plane passes, you do notice that the bluish red, or the bluish uh, purple sky above you begins to go a shade of red as a fine red mist settles over the train yard. Coating your skin as some of the people are standing out there. And as it begins to pool, Birdie with a sickening sensation. I was going to say, I immediately close the infirmary door. <laughs> but you ahead. see as blood begins to coat all the people of Solomon's train yard. And I think that's where we're going to go ahead and uh, yeah. end the session here for today. Um, all right. Take a breath. Uh, we'll Bloody go ahead. Hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, pretty on the nose, but yeah. Yep. Yep. Well. <laughs> uh, awesome. 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 So let's go ahead. I know we're pushing it. So uh, let's let's do our history thing. Let's do the hex thing. Um, I'll go in reverse order from what we did before. Uh, so, Phoenix, uh, who do you think knows Phoenix a bit better than before? Well, here's the thing, no one, because I haven't really... Actually, no, I have got one for this, and... Hmm. Okay, given the weird interaction earlier that admittedly Solomon did just kind of um, glance over while dealing with everything else, 
Phoenix is outright saying, I'm going to the highest bidder at this point while still talking to Solomon. He may have glanced over that, but I feel that's the most appropriate thing I've got. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think he didn't, in that moment, I don't think he knew you better, but I think we was mentioned later that Leopold and, or that I knew about it later on. The, I think, the yeah. rumor got around. Eventually. Yeah. I, I think I figured out late, <laughs> very late, but yeah. Cool. Uh, all right, so you take the plus one history with uh, Phoenix um, and Garrett. Who knows Garrett a bit better? He didn't have an interaction with anyone today, <laughs> like okay. none of the PCs. So uh, so you can either pick someone randomly and they get negative one, or you can say somebody doesn't know you as well as they think they did and give them a negative one. Um, one, two. Yeah. I'm just going to... I don't know. Could just roll a d5 and roll that's, 20. That's what I was gonna do. I was gonna do a d5. Yeah. All right, everybody call out numbers one through five. Three, one, Four. I guess five. Just leave Savannah with two. Oh. Five. All right. oh. Okay, so that's minus one for me to Garrett. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Solomon. I think Leopold knows me better. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, Birdie. I do not know. <laughs> I have no idea. I can tell you who she knows least, less now. But I, I got nothing unless someone else wants to decide for me because I don't know. Like, I'm at a loss here. That's fine. I mean, you can you can pick somebody just randomly, or you can uh, give them a negative or a or a positive. Frick. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. Uh, Garrett knows me less because he wasn't here. Okay, that works. <laughs> uh, all right, and Tesla. Solomon. And Leo. So I think Lindsay was implying that she thinks uh, she knows Leopold less well, but she was able to, you know, actually figure out, okay, yes, he is lying. I just don't know about what. So um, Birdie knows Leopold a bit better. All right. Uh, so I think that's everyone. Okay. So I think that's going to put a bow on it and we will uh, pick up next time to see how your uh, trade nerd deals with this incoming crisis. Um, any final remarks before we, uh, before we call off for today? Um, uh, I'm going to do the mess for a second. I'm just going to know everyone yeah. just yell or scream. Uh, just uh, real quick, when you get to four do you roll back to zero or do you roll back to one to one one all right so it is to one okay yeah all right um and then i think yeah if you go if you took a negative you, you can go to zero if you're at one they get a negative so yeah um you would be at zero there okay so uh, that will do then. Uh, as far as announcements go, as per usual, uh, thank you everyone for watching. Um, all of our credits for everything, music, art, artists, things like that, all are below. Um, if you're interested in things that are going to be happening on our channel in the future, uh, you can check us out on Twitter. We do all of our announcements there. Uh, come check us out on Thursday for our GGK Roundtable discussion, uh, where Lindsay Ryan and I will talk about DMing, GMing in a uh, in a Roll20 world. Um, and as far as that, our normal lineup, all leading up to in a couple of weeks, get hyped for uh, the first session of Tidefall on the 22nd, uh, which will be run by Lindsay as well. Uh, we are super excited about that. And there'll be more details on that uh, D&D 5e campaign to follow. Otherwise, we have uh, Survivor's Complex on Saturday and Wild Space on Monday. Uh, I think that's all that we got. Oh, yes. I would just like to say out loud on stream, um, hi, Flint, and 
We see you out there oh. in the chat, and congratulations on uh, winning the dice giveaway. And we'll be messaging you soon to uh, get your information so we can get those dice in your hands. Yes, congratulations on that. I did not know you were in the chat. Uh, I do not have chat up, but thank you for letting me know. Congrats on the dice, and we will get those to you right away. Uh, awesome. I'm so glad you were able to make it for our stream. Um, Okay, I think that's everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. Uh, we will see you later this week. And until next time, good game and good night, Internet. Good night, good night, good night Internet. Good night, Internet. Good night, Internet. Good night, Internet.